This is a 2007 Family Continental GT. Getting it in the air is the first big challenge, and the jack point is not here. A lot of cars jack on the frame rail or uh, the sill. That's not it. Um, it's right here. There's a flat spot. There's actually a hole where a uh, a uh, four post lift or two post lift can plug in. So there's one of those front and rear and those are the platforms to jack on. Um, I had to use rhino ramps and basically a whole bunch of wood and shim it to get it to where I could get a jack under it because the front airbag should fail. Got a uh, basically a stand underneath the uh, control arm attachment point which I'm not wild about because it's cast aluminum but uh, it's better than nothing. Definitely better than the car falling if uh, that were to take place. Got a 10 millimeter wrench to take that off. And uh, now I'm getting this piece apart. Make sure with this fitting that first you knock this bolt out. Um, it was a 16, I wanna say, but uh, remove the bolt. It seems like these have a slot in them because they move very quickly with three job puller and with the air hammer uh, right after removing the bolt. So do that first and uh, then you'll be on your way. I got this guy loose and couldn't figure out why with this loose I can't force the suspension down like what could be holding it up because these are already disconnected and as, as you can see there's a detent that bolt retains so you got to knock those out then they come out nice and easy with a little hammer tap. tap. Um, the uh, drag bar is I think what's holding it up because that's the only place it's getting up from the other side looks like my CV boots are torn here as well so maybe we'll do that while we're in here but uh, that's what's going on with that. Basically have jacked the uh, control arm high enough that uh, this is unloaded and I can turn it with my finger. That way I know that that's not gonna have any spring loaded uh, energy in it when I pull the bolt. And as you can see, it's all in agreement. And now I should be able to lower the control arm. Yep, there we go. So that's the movement I'm gonna need to get the strut out. After I disconnected the, uh, let's see, track bar or the sway bar um, connection, then all of a sudden it could drop far enough and came out. Uh, the problem was the strut kept wanting to absorb air and grow, so I just jacked it up uh, small and then tied it so that it couldn't extend again, and I kept it small even when the control arm went down, came right out. Doing the second side, uh, air strut replacement on the Bentley Continental GT 2007. Uh, second side was much quicker. So if you undo the bracket for the sway bar before um, taking weight off wheels, then that will stay in place and it won't be ready to spring at you. Uh, looks like, again, I got a torn up CV boot. So uh, these half shafts will need replaced, but that's another day's problem. Um, let's see, I went up here um, from above, loosened up the uh, T55. Um, it's actually a 12 point, but you can get it with a T55. Um, used a breaker bar to just go real easy on those, and they loosened right up. So you can pretty much back those off almost entirely. Uh, 10 millimeter wrench to do the airline at the strut. Um, this guy, um, you can undo, I think it's a 16, and then you can just hammer it out with a, a little uh, driver of some sort to run that bolt out and then a few uh, taps of the hammer um, that actually came apart very easily. Um, once that happens, this whole assembly is gonna wanna come this direction, so just be ready for that. And I'm supporting some of the weight here with a separate jack. This is definitely a two jack um, operation. Got one in place here on the lifting point and then a second just jack stand underneath the control arm, which I don't really wanna lift from because it's cast aluminum, but it's way better than having the car fall down should that be an issue. Um, other than that, the uh, second strut is going to be longer than the failed strut, so I'm going to have to drop the control arm a little bit. That will give me enough clearance between here, where the fork will clear, and up there, where it's going to mount in, and that just bolts up. Um, I'll put the control arm back, and it looks like we'll be good to go. I don't know if this is what caused the problem, but this is loose and it moves. That's the air connection, the fill valve. This one doesn't, there's a gasket there. Looks like the integrity and that connection is important. So uh, maybe that was it. But that's the RMT uh, Master Tech rebuild. And that's what it looks like. It's gonna go right back in. 
This is the RMT uh, new replacement for the right side front for the Bentley Continental GT. It's a 2007. Um, you can see here, I've got a torn up uh, CV boot and I wish I had ordered this part, uh, the half shaft, um, also from RMT, but I didn't. So that'll be a future pro project. Um, the trick to this, I've started off by disconnecting the sway bar here, which is unnecessary, but I did need to take loose here. And that allowed me to finally get the control arm down far enough to fit the new part in. Um, the issue is that the old part is compressible by hand because it's faulty, but this one is not. And so it's longer and it doesn't fit. The good news is that that means maybe it'll be in proper ride height position when I set the car down. So um, might be some upside to that, but in the short term, um, you have to take the sway bar loose and I loosened it up on the other side too. And that gave me enough downward uh, movement in the control arm to fit the new part. Overall, this is a fairly straightforward project, much easier than changing springs out of the Humvee, but you will find very large parts. This thing has enormous brakes and uh, some, some very large parts. So you may want an extra jack or something that you can use to uh, lift the control arms and move some of these parts around without trying to get your hands in there. I smashed my thumb actually on the, the uh, sway bar and that was a significant delay. Probably took me more time to fix that than fix the rest of the car. So um, take your time, do things carefully and support things properly. Keep your hands out of there um, and it should be fairly straightforward and easy. The recalibration process is fairly straightforward, but it is nuanced and you have to do it a certain way. So the uh, Ross Tech website has this information, but basically what you do, um, I had an Altel scanner available to me. So um, you log into the car, 31564 is the code. So you do, you go to the suspension module, you log in with that, and then you start on channel one. If you try to start on channel two or three, which is other corners of the car, it won't let you communicate. So you have to start with channel one, which is your left front, and give it a value. So the calibration value is from center of hub to the bottom of the wheel well. It's a Volkswagen process shown here in this picture. So you just uh, get a metric tape or convert from uh, SAE and take that measurement tell the car where it's at and it will adjust from there once you save the values. So you're looking for 395, which is the default value. And the way it works is you set up, um, basically just measure and you tell it where it's at. So for example, it thinks it's at 395, but you tell it, no, you're at 415. And it goes, oh, okay, I need to adjust myself 20 millimeters. And that new value on the sensor is where it knows that it's at 395, which is the correct preset ride height. So you start with channel one, you assign 395, even if it already is 395, uh, choose assign a new value, assign 395, and go on to the next one. Um, you'll do this for each of the four corners. I had to do it twice to get it fully dialed in, but you have to save step by step through each corner. And then the secret to the whole thing is you go to channel five and set a new value of one. So in my case, it was like 0001 and you save, assign that new value. And that's what pushes it into the computer and writes the new values. Then you'll hear the suspension start to adjust and put itself uh, back to level set. So um, do that. If you don't go in order from the beginning, just like I described, it's going to kick you out of the system and you'll have to start over.